Miracles have occurred throughout history, but are there supernatural answers for the emotional, financial, physical, and spiritual needs we face today? Miracles still happen, and in the next few moments, Sam Luke will share practical insights into knowing the God of miracles. Join Sam and the Victory Tabernacle Church family as we encounter a God who makes miracles still happen. Have you ever tried and failed and tried and failed and tried and failed until you just didn't want to try anymore? Jesus understands our frustration. And he wants to come into your life today to break the chain of failure in your life, to break that cycle of failure and disillusionment and give you hope. The message today that God has birthed in my spirit is entitled Breaking the Cycle of Failure. And I want you to stay tuned and open your heart wide and allow God to minister to you today. I believe God has something special in store for you that will change your life forever for the better. So stay tuned and at the close of the program as always, we'll come together for a special time of prayer. So let's go together right now into service where the power of God is moving and that service is already in progress. Jesus comes across Peter, James and John and the Bible said they fished all night and they caught nothing and it's daybreak and they're tired and they're worn out and they're washing their net. Why? Would you do that? What's wrong with this picture? Why would you wash nets that have not been used? Frustration. Anger. And you give up. And you wash nets that don't need to be washed. And Jesus knew what was going on in their hearts. And he called Peter, James, and John for the same reason he's called you and me. Because he looked beyond our failures and our weaknesses. And he saw an instrument that he could use, a worker, a witness, a warrior, a champion. Hallelujah. The world looks at us and doesn't see much today. But the Bible says that God doesn't see as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. They were tired and they were washing their nets. And I want to ask you a question this morning. Are you washing your nets? Have you given up? Some of you have given up on your marriage just to spare yourself the emotional trauma. You're washing your nets. Some of you have given up on your ministry because you just somehow think maybe you misunderstood and God never intended to bless you. Some of you have given up on your kids. I heard somebody the other day said, I've just lost connection with my children. And you still go to church, but behind your smile and your hymn singing and your hand clapping, you're just washing your nets. Why would anybody give up? Because you're convinced, listen, you're convinced that things are not going to get any better, and you're just tired of trying. You've been put down so long that you believe all those bad things the devil has been saying about you, and you've decided to call it quits, and you're just washing your nets, and it can happen to anybody. Rich people and poor people, white people and black people, young people and old people, male and female. If you have a Ph.D. or you can't read your name in boxcar letters, it can happen to anybody. It can happen to everybody, and it is a spirit of failure. And what I want to talk to you about today is breaking the cycle of failure in your life. Sometimes when you give up, at least you've stopped struggling. Sometimes when you give up, you're not riding an emotional roller coaster anymore. Sometimes when you quit, it brings a sigh of relief and you say, I can't please anybody anyway, so I just quit. The pressure is off. Nobody is going to criticize me anymore. What's wrong with washing your nets? What's wrong with quitting? Who told you God 
was finished. Who told you God wasn't going to bless you anymore? Who told you God wasn't going to bring you out? Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. God, according to his divine power, has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Jesus said, little flock, it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God said in his word, he will not withhold any good thing from those who walk uprightly before him, but he will give you grace and glory. Hallelujah. Get ready for a breakthrough in your life. You are standing on the threshold of a wonderful breakthrough if you'll just not quit today. I mean, how do you know? How do you know that just one more step and you won't be there? How do you know just one more day and it won't all turn around? Jesus came to these failing fishermen at their point of need. And I want to tell you something. You don't have to go looking for Jesus. He's looking for you. And he's going to give you back what you've given up on. Now, Jesus borrowed their boat and pushed out from shore and preached a little bit. Now, he didn't have to preach because he was a sermon. Amen? He didn't just preach a sermon. But he said, let me borrow your boat, and I want to preach a little bit. And he pushed the boat away from the shore just enough so that it would be like an amphitheater and all the people could hear what he was saying. And then when he got through, he said something to them that blew their minds. He said, launch out into the deep. Now, you know, in Israel, they still fish the same way they did back then. You'll see people with nets. And the way you catch a fish with a net is you trap them against the bank. That's the way it works. And Jesus says to these fishermen who have fished all their lives, their daddies were fishermen, their granddaddies were fishermen, he said, launch out into the deep. And I believe Peter rolled his eyes around his head and looked at John, James and John and says, this guy's nuts. Because you don't catch fish like this out in the deep. You catch them on the bank. And Peter misunderstood what the Lord was saying. And you will too sometimes if you're not careful. Because Peter thought the Lord was saying, you haven't tried. You haven't tried. And Peter said, Lord, we've been up all night trying to catch fish. There are no fish to be caught. What are you saying? Sometimes the Lord will tell you to do things that will boggle your mind. Sometimes the Lord will tell you to do things that don't make any sense at all as far as the world is concerned. I mean, tell me how giving away 10% of your income is going to get you more money. Hello? And yet God says, bring the tithe in, and if you will, I'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you won't have room to receive. I'd rather have 90% in it blessed and 100% in it cursed. Amen? Doesn't make any sense to Wall Street, but oh, it makes sense to the child of God because God knows all things, and He is the fountainhead from which every blessing flows. Now, the reason He could tell them launch out in the deep because He was God and He knew where the fish were. And so He said, launch out into the deep. Listen, listen, listen. Some of you need to get rid of your stinking thinking. You've been hanging out in the shallows with shallow-minded people, and they're depressing you. You need to get away from some folk. Amen? There's some people in church, God help me, I'm going to preach a little bit now. When I take my glasses off, I'm getting ready to preach just a little bit, about 30 seconds right now. Some of you have listened to so much garbage from traditionalists. People say, this is the way we used to do it. This is the way we always done it, and that's why you got what you got. If you want something different, you got to do something different. Amen? If you want the same old thing, then do the same old thing you've always done. But if you want something different, break out. Do something different. Amen. God said, there ain't no fish up in here. The fish are out there. If you want something, launch out in the deep. And they said, well, we don't know, we don't know anybody that fishes like this, and we don't know that we've ever done anything like this, and this is not traditional, and this is not the way we do church, I mean the way we fish, but 
nevertheless, at thy word. Woo! I'm about to shout just a little bit over what I'm getting ready to say. If God ever tells you anything to do, you better do it. I said you better do it. Oh, I'm preaching better than y'all amen and now. See, God will tell you something, and you'll argue with God and reason with God. Well, God, I can't afford to do this, and Lord, I, I just can't afford. You know, God, you know, I ain't got it right now. Lord, you know, and God says, this is what I want you to do. When I left Detroit, God spoke to my heart and said, across the street there's some land. That land is going to get real cheap because of the Depression. Buy it. Buy it, and the church one day will build a home for senior adults, affordable, clean housing, and buy it. Buy it now. Next day, a man comes into my office as an attorney representing the owners of uh, Lazy Boy. Their headquarters is there. And he comes in, he says, uh, I represent uh, the man that uh, owns this property adjacent to your church, and I wonder if you'd be interested in selling it. He said, we approached the church about 10 years ago and wanted half a million dollars for it. I said, well, how much you want for it now? Well, would you give us 100000 I said, well, would you take fifty? And would you let me make half of that as a tax credit? He said, I don't know. I'll take it back to the people. I said, they got plenty of money. Go back and tell them. Hot times are hard. This is a church. Sure enough, we brokered a deal and then couldn't get up the 25000 I said, Lord, I know what you told me to do. You know what my wife and I did? We went and got the money ourselves and put it up. And right after that, God got in the arrangements and said, you're supposed to be in Virginia. You're not even supposed to be here, and here I am. And they said, we can't pay you back. I said, pay me when you can. I did what God told me to do. i got to go to Virginia now. And I had an old car that I had taken over from somebody that I signed with. Let me tell you something. Don't sign with anybody. <laughs> Because if their credit is no good, there's a reason for it. Amen. I signed with this fella, and then he decided he wasn't going to pay for the car anymore, and I just had to take it over because I had to pay. And I despised that car. And not only did I despise it, it was probably the worst automobile I ever had. And it was so bad, I gave it to my wife. And she hated it worse than I did. And it would break down every now and then. She'd call me, well, the car you gave me is broken down. And the one you signed, uh, with, you know, she'd always throw that up in my face. And I tried to sell that thing. I couldn't give it away. So here we are on our way to Virginia. We get down to, to Cincinnati, Ohio, and it quits. Coast into, uh, what is the name of that thing? Tire discounters. Coast in the tire discounters. And they put it up on the rack, and I said, I don't know what's wrong with it, but I'm trying to get to Virginia. I'm taking a new pastorate, and i got to get to Virginia. Can you see if you can fix it? Well, we'll try, Reverend, but we don't know what's involved in fixing it. It might be the engine blown up. We don't know. But uh, they had it up on the rack, and I'm sitting there thinking, now, God, I just paid for something that I won't ever see. I obeyed you, and now you sent me to Virginia, and, and on the way, you, 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 I'm in a mess. What, are you, what is going on here? I've been preaching prosperity and blessing and obedience, and, and now I'm sitting here looking at maybe putting a new engine in a car I hate, and, 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 and I just don't need to start off like this. Man walks in. He says, Pastor, what are you doing here? And I said, well, see that old car up in there? It broke down, and... It's my wife's car. He started crying. I had pastored that man years ago. He started crying. He said, oh. He said, for three months, almost every night, the Lord's been waking me up in the middle of the night and telling me to buy your wife a new car. 
She's standing there next to me, and she's so sweet. She's everything you think she is. She's just like she is. She said, oh, you don't have to buy me. I said, shh. I rebuke you. Be a good receiver. He took her down to the Buick place and bought her a brand new Buick LaCrosse. It had just rolled off the truck. It was for the senator's son. And he said, that put a hold on it. They said, we'll get him another one. You were going to sell you this one. The man paid cash, turned around and handed her the title and said, I've got to obey God. I thought because I obeyed God, he had to obey God. If I'd never obeyed God, he would have never obeyed God. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes God will tell you to do something. And it doesn't make a lick of sense in the natural. But obey God and watch what God will do. He said, nevertheless, at thy word, at thy word. See, you can depend on the word of the Lord. Isaiah 55, 10, 11, For as the rain cometh down the snow from heaven, returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. We ought to give the more earnestly to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken? by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. God will do everything that he said he will do in his word. And the Lord said, launch out into the deep. Now watch this. Remember I told you to underline the word net. They had been washing their nets. Now they went out into the deep. And Simon Peter throws out a net, not one of those nets he had just washed, but an old rotten net that was up under the bow of the boat, and he threw it out. Now see, he had become so discouraged that he couldn't anticipate the blessing that was coming his way. Oh, I got a word for somebody here this morning. You've been beat up and battered and bruised. You came into this place and you said, Lord, I'm going to try it one more time. But I've tried and failed so many times. I don't even want to try. My heart's not really in it. But one more time, Lord, one more time, I'm going to try. Maybe you're like Peter. He threw out an old rotten net because he didn't anticipate the blessing that was coming his way. But God still blessed him anyhow. You don't have to dot every I and cross every T to get God to work in your behalf. Sometimes it's just a feeble attempt to be obedient. Sometimes it may not be the best try, but it's always when God says, it's time. Timing is everything. Maybe you've tried a lot harder in the past. Maybe you've focused a lot more attention in the past and what you're doing. But today, if you can manage to just get the gumption to try one more time, God is going to give you a breakthrough. And he threw out his net, and whoa, <laughs> Oh, as soon as he did, God said, all you fish is big and little. Go get in that net right now. And started pulling the boat down. Started to sink the boat. And he cried out and he said, hey, you fellas in the other boat, come over here and help me. This boat's going to sink. And they came over and started putting the fish in their boat. Supernaturally, God made a way. And you know what Simon Peter said? Lord, I'm not worthy to be in your presence. Depart from me. I'm a sinful man. God said, I'm just trying to show you things to come. I'm going to break the cycle of failure in your life. I believe that you're ready to pray. In fact, I believe God has brought your faith to a place where you're ready to receive from Him. Would you believe God with me right now? 
I want you just to pray this prayer. I want to lead you in a prayer that I believe God will hear and answer. So please, just pray with me right now. Will you? Let's pray like this. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. Have mercy on me. Help me. Deliver me. Set me free. Give me my breakthrough. Give me a miracle. Thank you, Father, because I know you love me. I know you care about me. And I know you will supply my every need, spiritually, emotionally, physically, financially, and materially. Thank you, Father, for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Well, praise the Lord. I believe God heard your prayer. I want to hear from you now. Please call the number on your screen. Call us now and tell us about what God has done in your life. We really want to hear from you. And there will be a, 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 a person on the other end of the line that loves you and cares about you that will uh, be willing to pray with you again and take you into the Scripture. So please give us a call right now. We want to know about what God has done for you. And also when you call, every time you call, we send a special gift to you just because you took time to call us. You know, here at Victory Tabernacle, we believe the most important thing in your life after you receive Christ is to find a Bible-believing, Christ-centered, Spirit-filled, on-fire church. And Victory Tabernacle is that kind of church. Every Sunday morning, we begin our day at 10 o'clock with a praise celebration that is second to none. Anointed singing dynamic, powerful, spirit-filled worship. And then I bring a message every Sunday from God's Word that will challenge and inspire you. That's Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. And the last Sunday in every month is our miracle service. And that's an additional service that we do every Sunday. In addition to the 10 o'clock service that we do every Sunday, there is one service once a month, the last Sunday of the month, that we call our miracle service, and it begins at 6 o'clock. So be sure to join us because it's at 6 o'clock on that Sunday evening that we believe God for mighty signs and wonders and miracles. And I'm telling you, God is confirming His Word with signs and wonders and miracles. Then don't forget every Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock, you can find us right here in our Family Enrichment Night service. We have something special for every age group and every member of the family. Royal Rangers for the boys. Missionettes for the Girls, a dynamic youth program for teens, and a special program for young adults called The Vine. And I teach in the main sanctuary, that's every Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, and at 8.30 we're walking out the door. Also remember that during these service times, our Hispanic church also meets. So we have something for everybody right here at Victory Tabernacle. Thank you so much for joining us on the program today. I'm so glad you're there. And please call us now and tell us about what God has done in your life. Or if you need more information about the church, feel free to call. You can check us out at victorytab.org and find out all about the ministries of this wonderful church. Remember, this is Pastor Sam Luke reminding you that Victory Tab Tabernacle is the place where faith brings the victory and miracles still happen. I'll be looking for you. Everyone struggles from time to time. It could be the loss of a loved one, the unmistakable feeling of loneliness and rejection. Maybe we're looking for a friendly smile or a warm hug from someone who really cares. sees us when we're hurting and when we're broken 
He hears our cries and comes to us at our point of need. Jesus never rejected anyone, and neither do we at Victory Tabernacle, the place you've been looking for. Join.